I'm Chi. This is my first gardening video. So I'm sitting in my backyard right now in the afternoon. I'm gonna give you the first tour of my garden. Um, just the vegetables. I've been growing for more actively for the past two years. Um, we are in zone 8A oh God, in DFW area. I also have my little helper with me here, um, but let's get started. This is my backyard. I'm uh, trying to clean it up right now, so it's still a little bit messy. Uh, my philosophy is that I grow for fun. Um, there's no pressure. I'm kind of a messy gardener. Um, I, I am organized in a way that I'll write down my goal, like by a certain time of certain month, I want to lay down certain uh, vegetables. But, you know, I'm not like, I don't plan out to the, the T, the dot, you know, um, because I like to just kind of experiment. Sometimes I, a lot of time I grow things together, you know, just to see what, uh, how they support each other and how I can intercrop them. Okay. These are all my fruits trees, so let's just skip that for now. Um, this is the first year I try to grow cabbage. Uh, grow different cabbages and see what grow best here. And I know it's too hot right now. It's too hot, I tell you. Um, here's the cabbage. I don't know why it does that. It has mm -hmm. dust. It's okay, Con. It's supposed to be like that. Just leave it alone. It's a different kind of cabbages. I don't really like cabbage, but I grow them because I never have. You know what? I don't like cabbage because it makes you fart. <laughs> of course, I cannot live without my chili. So I have my chilies. Good. And here we have um, the elephant garlic. Garlic is free now. Uh-huh. Garlic, yeah, garlic is free. Oh, we have some strawberry in here. A lot of my strawberry died last year from the extreme, extreme heat in Texas. So, I have mustard growing around here. Onions, of course, because we eat a lot of green onions. So, I like to come out here and just cut. But these are the regular bulb onion. This is stevia. Um, I'm not a fan of stevia because uh, the af aftertaste, but it, it's definitely very sweet. Too sweet for me. Okay, so back to this one beside the cabbage. I, <laughs> I have onions over here. I also have celtus. You see a bunch of celtus. They're little seedlings. Yeah, celtus, celtus, celtus. It can tolerate sun, but it can do well in partial shade. And I've been cutting this for lettuce and, you know, substitute for lettuce and salad. Uh, what happened is that I have a bunch of seeds from last year and I accidentally uh, dumped them out there. And guess what happened? A bunch of them grow. Okay, next thing I have over here. This has a beef, beefy taste. Oh my goodness. It tastes like some sort of burnt stir fry beef. It kind of. It smells like some sort of beef or something. Weird. That leaf does taste like beef. <laughs> if, and I smell If it. you're a vegetarian and you just want something to put in your mouth and chew to satisfy the savory taste, definitely go for it. I feel like it's raw beef or something. Oh my god, interesting. Well, not like that. Yeah, but, raw. yeah but it's definitely like beef. Wow. Yeah. Alright, and then in the back of the beds, I put in snow peas because I would go around and pinch the shoot and we eat the shoots. So I have snow peas uh, integrated all on the beds. 
of course it's more mustard greens and this is actually a type of lettuce it's called um, Taiwan sword leaf lettuce so they're very um, heat tolerant and that's why I like them the other lettuce will struggle you know and this is full sun exposure over here let's go around here I have more chili plants Ooh, and this is one of my favorites. This is Tindora. Some chards here from last year that grew back. Uh, there's some um, more snow peas. Let's see. Oh, and you know, I really love this um, Chinese uh, celery. So, and these are perennials. So if they grow back, they have very distinct taste. Very good to stir fry with uh, beef or fish. This is a kind of earth. Purple snow peas. More cabbage. I try to grow cabbage on the side so that uh, it doesn't take up the whole space. And I pinch off the leaves if they come over to the other side. As you can see, I love onion. More chilies. Oh, this is a peanut plant. Hey. Chinese broccoli, uh, peas, some herbs in here, this uh, Vietnamese mint down here. They grow back from last year. See, you know, I just leave them. Yeah, because uh, I eat a lot of spring rolls. There's a bird there. It's a family bird. See? Yeah. Shh, shh. There's a baby bird in there. A little head start this year and um, I cheated a little bit because I use a greenhouse a greenhouse over the four planter there a friend of mine on uh, plant group um, gave me a bunch of yangon but uh, two years ago but something ate all of them and this is all that's left oh this is a cardone cordon. It kind of looks like artichoke. This is a bay leaf. Seedlings, tomato seedlings, and different mustards. Oh, this is a new kind of chard that I'm gonna try. It's supposed to, supposedly very heat tolerant. Okinawa spinach, longevity spinach. And also uh, Brazilian spinach. I really like this. It's so good. This one loves the shea. It doesn't bolt easily if you put in the shea. The whole time last summer, I did not bolt. This is no peas. Have to put some trellis up so it can grow up. Uh, collard green. It's so good. I haven't seen it bolt yet. Bell pepper. I can see little fruit somewhere. Yeah, already have flowers. All right, this thing right here I grow every year. Water spinach from seeds. Uh, and of course, in every bed I put some sort of melon or squash. You know, to see what grows. Oh, curry plant. I haven't used this yet, but um, you know, I would have to try someday. They grow very slow. I love color, so bought this right here. It's called red vein sorrel. It's so pretty, isn't it? It's pretty, but it doesn't taste as good as the green one. All right, moving on to the next one. Uh, this is mustard, but the swollen stem mustard. Uh, I grew them throughout the winter and now they bolted. And I just let them be because this is an early kind of flower for the bees and the butterflies. Deal. This is a uh, 
This is sorrel. I like this one. The green one tastes much better. This is mature water spinach. That's the same thing I'm trying to grow. But this is from last year, you know, because they were in the plastic greenhouse. They survived. And this is just um, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Huh. This one say radish tail. I don't think so. You see, sometimes we make mistakes. It's definitely not radish tail. This is chards. Yellow and red. To redo my tomatoes because the uh, late frost kill my other. Okay, and I have cucumber and center squash. This is um, something is an acquired taste. People sometimes cook it with egg. Vietnamese do that. This right here is white eggplant. This is the one that I would, uh, you know, um, I, I ferment the white eggplant, kind of like kimchi, but um, eggplant kimchi. Over here, here, it's more chilies. It's all over winter from last year. This is kale. This is the Celtis I was talking about over there, the one that I accidentally threw down the whole bag of last year's seeds. Well, I collected them like from these and it's already bolted, but come closer. This is what's special about Celtis. See that stem, how big it is, see? Wow, huge, right? That's my hand, it's huge. Well, we eat the stem. Yeah. So we cut the stem and make salad. Now the smell of this plant is divine. Because, oh, it smells like, have you ever eaten jasmine rice? Yeah. It smells like that. Or pandan flavor. It's so amazing. The smell is irresistible. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna keep on collecting the seeds and grow this every year, okay? This is a broadleaf celtus. A fallen radish. See, I'm gonna collect the pods for stir fry. We love to eat this pod. Well, you see how this size is perfect. If it get bigger, then it's gonna be too fibrous to eat. Right here is Malabar spinach. Look at it. How huge the leaves is. It's yeah, enormous. Let me look at my hand. Yeah, look at mommy hand. And this is a white eggplant that I was talking about. One of my favorite eggplant. I don't cook it, it's for fermentation. Well, this is wing beans. Wing bean is very slow to, to germinate and sprout. But there's one baby. Okay, this is an early uh, day neutral one. And then I also have hibiscus small shell. I love to eat this and it grows very easily too. Uh, the leaves I use it to use uh, in spring roll as well because it's sour. This is something I have never grown before. Safflower. This is safflower. Look at that, amazing. Okay, now we're gonna go to the front yard. Basil, uh, no, onion and parsley. Look at this. And the parsley is bolting and I just let it be. Look at that. How beautiful. Turnips. And more purple snow peas. Here we have Claytonia. Oh man, these things grow in the snow. It's bolting now. This is also Celtus, but this is a pointy leaves one, not the um, 
broad leaf. I like the taste of the broad leaf better. Um, but you know, I'm just gonna let it bulk so that it can attract pollinators. And these are onions from last year. They're huge. If it does bolt, I'm just gonna let it bolt. I'm not gonna eat this one so I can save the seeds. And of course, I put in different things out here like different watermelons. Uh, last year we have some watermelon, but rat ate all the fruits. First year growing, rutabaga. Look at that. Did not die. We have the snow. Didn't die, but it did like die back down. I don't see the the bulb. Oh well. Look at little peanut plant. Mm, this is also some sort of squash. Cilantro. Beautiful. Colted. The Texas heat just killing some of here. Oh, look at this special plant. This plant has lived through two winters and it shouldn't have in zone AA, but I was able to keep it alive. And this is a super plant, it grows so fast. Moringa. Try to put some flowers in. As you can see, I'm hiding some of my finish, you know, so it doesn't bolt. So far, it's working. Thank you for watching. Um, I just want to show this so that you can, you know, if you ever thought of having or starting a garden, um, it's always good to start now. Um, you know, start with something you like, start with something that the people you love like to eat um, and just be real you know just don't stress about it if you don't know how you know dr. Google know everything YouTube too or if you just want to take a chance and just throw some seed down all plants need is some sort of water some sort of Sun some sort of soil and if you want to experiment you can do that um, it is really fun, you know. Sometimes the harvest is poor, but because you made it yourself, it makes it special. So, I hope you enjoy this little tour. Thanks for joining me. And if you like, give it a thumb up.